Good morning. So, since I posted videos of my doors across social media, many different platforms, one question is, I keep getting is, what are my crossover points set at? For the horns, the tens, the tweeters, and I figured I'd do a video on that today. And honestly, it's pretty simple. I'm thinking that most people are referring to the fact that I have a DSP in here now. And DSPs can seem confusing. Really, they're not. Uh, how I learned to use it, I just kind of put the firmware for the DSP or the software on my laptop and I spent some time playing with it. I mean, you don't have to have it hooked to the DSP to play with it. You can like make a file using the software, save that file, and then when you hook the DSP up, just load it straight into the DSP. But one, that's how I learned to use the DSP. I kept playing with the software and kind of learning what everything does. And it's really simple. I mean, it don't take long at all to learn how to use one. But back to the crossover points. Uh, what I what I have done, and it has worked really, really well, is I actually read the specs that come with each speaker. Like my 10-inch Neos, uh, I read the range that they play, the frequency response, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they start at 60 hertz and go up to 2,000. So those channels of the DSP that I planned using for the 10s, you know, I did uh, 60 hertz starting and then i went to the other side of the spectrum and did the cut off at 2000 that way they will not play any higher than 2000 they won't play any lower than 60 but they will play a little bit lower than 60. that's where you run into uh the the slope or octave whatever you know if you only have like a 6 db octave it's going to be like the flat line the frequency response and then it's going to taper longly you know and it actually might go down to 20 hertz but it's going to play that 20 at low 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 volume but you'll have a graph there that you can kind of see and i just kind of chose a uh, db octave that worked really good to not go much lower than 60 but i did that with each speaker you know the horns i think their frequency response started at like uh 600 I set the DSP for those channels 600. The tweeters, they actually had the little caps on the positive side to uh, block out like low frequency. I broke out the soldering iron, took those off, and I do everything by the DSP. I mean, if you're going to have a DSP with that much control, do it. Now, I'm not an EQ guy. I don't know. I, I, I can set up an EQ. But I'm the kind of guy that when I have an EQ, I'll go and set it on a certain song. And if I'm playing another, a different song, I'll be like, oh, this don't sound right. It needs more of this. And I would mess with the EQ. And that was back in the old day when they were in dash, you know, mounted with a head unit. No, I hate EQs for that reason. Most DSPs have a 10 band, 13 band, 31 band. I think mine has a simple EQ, which is 13 band per channel, and then a 31 band per channel. And I, I don't want to get into all that. Uh, I leave the EQ alone. I kind of go in and set frequency for each speaker, crossover points, and then I just kind of put everything together and listen to it at low volume, high volume, and whatever set of speakers was overpowering you just go in the dsp software on the laptop and turn those down to everything blends really good and leave it alone i hope this helped people uh i highly you know i had a lot of people tell me to get a dsp like for the past two years and i was scared of it i was like oh, i don't know man you got to set it up with a laptop and it wasn't something that i wanted to do but i have heard nothing but good things about them and um, I'm kind of glad I did. I mean, the sound quality is way better with the DSP. I've also heard a lot of people say they get engine noise through a DSP. And I fought engine noise in this Jeep forever. And that's another thing that really bothered me. And uh, 
I, I had to overcome that. I mean, my fight in the Jeep, I got rid of a lot of my engine noise when I ran the ground wire for my head unit directly in the back to my battery. It came back and it was due to a cheap, I'm not gonna mention a brand name, but a very high end brand name, a uh, base knob. I had base knobs, just, it wasn't actually like this. I had ordered a set for mids and highs to put in my console. And those base knobs or volume knobs, they created a shit ton of engine noise that I couldn't get rid of. And finally I bypassed them and every bit of my engine noise went away. When I put the DSP in, I ran the hot and negative wire directly to the battery in the back. And I have had no engine noise with the DSP. And I read that's a common issue with certain DSPs or whatever, but that's from now on, I'm gonna like wire everything to the battery. It seems to help a lot. Hope this helps somebody. Like, subscribe, keep watching my damn videos. TikTok screwing me over, I'm trying to do more for YouTube. And I need to get off track. There's a train coming. Nah, I'm just kidding. Everybody have a great day.